that the class divide that was sort of inherent into this region, given, you know, uh, the colonial sort of backdrop as well. Do you think that, that those those kind of uh, class differences and those cracks were basically uh, sort of exposed by uh, early interventions by the military and that class divide basically deepened as uh, the military sort of consolidated its grip over uh, the politics and the economy and that sort of those grievances um, and those resentment with the military rule, especially those 10 years of the uh, Ayub Khan uh, era, basically led to, you know, the the, the communist and the socialist sort of uh, forces uh, consolidate power in Pakistan in the late 60s. Do you think I would be right yeah. in saying that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the the latter, I mean, the idea of consolidation of power by the left, I think that's not there, right? I mean, uh, I mean, Bhutto cannot be said entirely a person of the left, although he's left of center and he has support of a lot of the underground. No, what 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 I'm trying to say, and Hamza Alvi talks about it in a nine, early night, Hamza Alvi, the uh, Pakistani sociologist, uh, British sociologist, uh, had a very informative and a very uh, important uh, article in the early 70s on the third world state. And he says the kind of coalition between a, in a place and taking Pakistan's example, it's a more general argument. He looks at what you were saying, the sort of uh, landed elite, the bureaucracy and the military coming together as a tripartite kind of way in which a post-colonial, it's about the post-colonial state. Having said that, what I'm trying to suggest, and this may be a little contrarian, that the military rule was, of course, uh, uh, at some level, uh, uh, you know, undemocratic and everything, but under the, its economic issue was that it basically allowed, and this has happened with the United States in Latin America and others, that there are certain kind of growth uh, argument is made around uh, private uh, investments about you know uh, 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 financial openings and things like that but for that you need a certain kind of a uh, heavy hand so what military played is to control those kinds of forces democratic or otherwise whether labor or otherwise so that a certain kind of space could be given to uh, investors uh, to uh, the captains of industry to basically unhindered uh, uh, sort of what they could say that of production, right? Without, uh, you know, all, all labor movement was crushed and everything. Like this is also Korea that happened. I mean, Korea had martial law or military rule till the 80s, right? I mean, this was the growth pattern in which uh, mm -hmm. a certain kind of uh, uh, industrial or capital-based growth was done, but what the military rule provide was the political cover for capital. That's sort of how you have to understand it structurally. What Ayub Khan did was given military cover or a kind of a heavy hand, a state cover, so that capital could have a free, a free hand without the kind of problems of uh, labor disputes or struggles or democratic norms or discussions and debate. Because in a, in a martial law or in a... So, but late 60s, all this sort of when this system collapses and the it's quite evident that the kind of distributive promises that were given did not come through. And also the issue of national rights. I said, yeah, we have to understand what also becomes because in 1950s, we already became one unit. What sort of late 60s does is also national rights, whether it's in Bengal, all the breaking up of the one unit system. Yeah. Right. So national rights, which is a politics of difference of identity and class issues, they come together in the politics against you and then the emergence of phenomena like uh, uh, Bhutto in the West and Mujib in the East. So they come together, the political economy and the sort of the politics of what I would say, politics of difference and identity or national. If you look at and I'll just stop after this. If you look at the national uh, 1970 election results. Basically, overwhelmingly, the uh, the populace had had uh, voted for groups that had uh, nationalist agendas. Look, in in NWFP, JUI did it, but so did NAP. Balochistan was all NAP. Uh, Bhutto had a certain kind of a Punjab sin thing, but a lot of his vote was also around sin. And Mujib, sort of, apart from one seat. Every other, every seat in East Pakistan went to Mujib, which was a nationalist question. So the qu nationalities question 
comes back in Pakistan as a federal state in 1970 election. It is even the electoral politics shows it around populism as well, around sort of uh, distribution of rights as well, Bhutto's sort of whole thing. But I think that is also has to be understood that by the late 60s, the, 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 it was forcefully kept together that these kinds of, uh, you know, the, the military rule was not only keeping uh, labor in check, it was not only keeping the democratic uh, aspirations of the people in check, but it was also sort of forcing a unity where uh, amongst different groups, you know, because Muslim national said we are Muslims first, but what has the reality is that we are different peoples of Pakistan. We have different histories, different cultures, and that was forcefully kept together, especially with East Bengal, especially, and now you still see the, the simmering things in Baluchistan. Sorry, I've gone more than you should, <laughs> you wanted me to. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, no I can that's... talk about the Bhutto era too, if you want, and that's not No, no, that's perf perfectly all right. Uh, sir, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I jump to the Bhutto era now, you know, Pakistan breaks up in 1971. Uh, I don't want to focus too much on that, but post-1971, you know, Bhutto comes into power and ultimately nationalizes the industries. And of course, there's a lot of debate about what outcomes did that please. Um, what do you think, you know, was the nationalization successful? Was it needed at that point? A lot of people also think that, you know, the idea was good. It could have been implemented, but maybe perhaps at a later stage. Um, do you think that the timing was wrong? Yeah, I mean, you know, the nationalization happens very early. It happens in February 1972. Bhutto just comes in as a... Uh, takes over power in uh, late December of 1971. So within a couple of months and, and Mubashir Hassan Saab and all. Dekhi, Mubatto comes in as a coalition of labor, peasant, uh, urban working, I mean, labor, urban working class students, uh, sort of the broader sort of democratic forces. He has a sort of a populist element in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he has always said socialism is our economics and this and that. And then he does that. Now, some of it, uh, in, in retrospect, one could say that some of that may have been in haste. There was also a pressure from below, a lot of pressure, because from the late 60s, uh, most places, but especially in large uh, place like uh, Karachi, uh, there was a labor struggle going on. There was absolutely, in, during when Yahya comes into power, after Bhutto, there is uh, this whole, and then there is a much more sort of intensification amongst labor processes and saying, you know, this whole issue of gharao, jelao and things like that. And actually some left groups, and I'll be saying this, some left groups thought that this was, a mo and when 71 happens, that this is sort of the collapse of the state. And this is the insurrectionary moment that was in 1917s in Russia. This was the thesis. So let's intensify it and take over. So there was a lot of pressure there. Bhutto basically also does two things. One, he nationalizes, and then he also crushes the labor movement in June and in um, in site area in Karachi and in Lanti Korangi in October. Viciously uh, crushes it because he had to show the rate of the state. Also, within act, rather uh, despite that, within his own ministers. And within his own sort of close cabinet members or coalition members are some leftist uh, people like Miraj Mohammad Khan, who then is actually also um, put in jail and tortured. So, <clears throat> so the nationalization is an open question because I think also Bhutto went after certain people, uh, certain industrialists whom he didn't have personal relationships with. So you know, for instance, in the in the in the shipping industry or in uh, you know certain areas he leaves alone and certain areas he goes after it. Irrespective of the fact and that as you as an economist would say that what the benefits are, what also happens in this uh, in this process, and I'll talk about it from a labor perspective, is one is sort of the bureaucratization of the management which also leads to a certain kind of corruption in terms of uh, access to certain resources for a, for the bureaucracy or the people in his own sort of uh, uh, political party. And to control labor, because he had this kind of taste of contestation from labor, who had actually supported him to come into power, but then he crushes them, he starts giving various kinds of concessions. You know, labor leaders are sent as labor uh, attaches abroad or people are given money or a lot of extra people are uh, given employment in industries where you didn't need it right so there is a corruption of so that they could be their people's parties labor cadres 
So there is a corruption of the labor uh, uh, of the management and of the labor movement as well. That Bhutto does to manipulate it politically to be in its form. None of that works because also what happens is that some of the people who were there, then of course he also does is that uh, he has these relationships and uh, uh, Middle East was opening up. So a lot of labor also goes there and gets this kind of, you know, it's kind of a safety valve because you can't give employment people here. So a kind of a safety valve happened. A lot of people go into the construction sector in UAE and Saudi Arabia. That is the time that it opens up, Dubai Jello phenomena. But you're right. I mean, it's a mixed bag. Uh, and I think partly it could have been successful uh, in certain areas. Uh, but uh, I mean, but he goes after banks, he goes after uh, 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 the shipping industry, he goes after text, uh, uh, text, not textile, but other kinds of food processing areas. So it's a kind of a mixed bag. And I think the bureaucratization of the industry, of the management, uh, led to a lot of problems. He goes uh, after well, education as well, but you know, grammar school and HSN are left, but others are, you know, so he does all kinds of, uh, you know, there are there are ways in which certain people are allowed to cherry, stay on. Cherry picking which, which yeah. ones to target basically. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm. I'm not sure that I've given you an adequate answer. You know. No, no, uh, that was perfect. But I that got me thinking about on another tangent. Also, uh, is that similar criticism is meted out to Bhutto's land reforms also. So, um, and and since we're uh, rushing towards the end of the show, we just have thirty minutes. So it was a lovely conversation. I wanted to hear more from you, but. Uh, my last question to you would be about land reforms. And Bhutto is often criticized for, you know, sort of nationalizing land, which uh, did not belong to people he knew. And like you said, uh, do you think that, you know, uh, similar sort of selective cherry picking of, uh, of families and people he wanted to target uh, also made, you know, the land reform process to suffer? The, I, I said, I'll be honest, I don't know about all the uh, uh, ceilings and, uh, and, and the particularities of the land reform, but one is clear, and I actually, my earlier work um, was in Egypt, and I did work in a rural area, this is I'm talking about late, early 90s, and there also I studied some of the land reform that Nasser did, which is sort of, you know, and eventually you find out that there are always loopholes and gaps in these programs. I'm just giving an analogy of Nasser, but it, I think it's also true of the land reform because there was a small land reform in, in the Ayub era as well. But uh, in the Bhutto era as well, the issue is of various kinds of kinds of land holding, you know, whether it is uh, rain fed, whether it's uh, it's canal fed, you know, so they, they, that kind of thing. And then also ceilings for a person, not as a family. So there are various kinds of loopholes that a lot of people could either declare their land as being Barani or sort of not very productive, or they could sort of distribute it under various names within their own family. So I don't think the, I mean, some, some land was distributed to peasants uh, and, but uh, but uh, the the they may not have been very productive, or the impact of his land reforms was not very entrenched amongst people. And a lot of the large land holders, especially in places like Sin, get, because they care. In 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 Punjab, although in East Punjab it's a very different issue, they did uh, have a good land reform and. The productive land, especially in canal-fed areas or areas that that have uh, water. Uh, you don't need like thousands of acres or, you know, a hundred acre in Gujramala will be very productive for a middle or a slightly upper middle peasant, right, to grow rice or something like this. In uh, in Sindh, a lot of that land was not distributed because people could sort of opt and say either they, I mean, there were loopholes. And it was not as successful as I uh, as in, in 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 Punjab as well. It may not have been as successful, but Punjab, the especially central Punjab, the land holdings had already been uh, 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 curtailed to a large degree, and the productive size of a good sort of middle in middle farmer was different. In in NWFP, there was a lot of problems as well, very big problems because. Uh, 
there actually in 1972-73 in Hashnagar, there were, there were movements to occupy land, especially in the Swat area and Hashnagar area. And there also there's a different kind of politics. 